Well, I wanted to thank you for watching our YouTube channel and for those of you supporting our efforts to produce these videos. Thank you, thank you. You are part of spreading the gospel around the world. If you're not a partner, prayerfully consider joining our efforts to help others the way you've been helped through the teachings. We can only imagine all the places God sends these videos once we post them online. But because it's filled with His Word, we know it's bringing light into dark places. Scan our QR code and give today. It's a decision that provides everlasting benefits to you and those waiting to see these messages. This program is made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Love is not just a word. It's not a sermon. It's not something we theorize about. It's action. I'm Joyce Meyer. I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. I'm going to challenge you to pray every morning. God, would you put somebody in my path today that I can help? How many of you would be willing to do that? Okay, now you stuck your hand up there and God saw it. Amen? And you can't be picky and choosy. And remember, there's none of this no, Lord, that doesn't work. You can't be selective about what God asks you to do. I had another experience about two weeks ago. I was in a restaurant eating. And you know, everybody's short of workers today, which I don't get any of that, but they can't. Nobody's got any money, but nobody wants to work, so I can't quite figure that out. And so they didn't have enough waiters and waitresses to take care of the crowd in there. So we sat there 20 minutes before anybody ever even came to bring us any water. And of course, I'm trying to act like a Christian and not be impatient. But I'm, I'm not the best waiter in the world. And so um, this girl finally comes over and she's real friendly. She said, I'm so sorry. You've been sitting here such a long time. She said, we are so short on help. And she said, I'm working 65 hours a week. And you could tell she was just so tired that she could hardly stand it. Well, when we got ready to leave, we gave her a hundred dollar tip. And, uh, you know, just to be nice. And my husband just said, you know, you're doing, you're doing a good job here. You're really going the extra mile, working hard. So we just wanted to bless you. So she starts crying. <laughs> and she cries for 15 minutes. She's, cry she's the bartender. She's crying behind the bar. <laughs> she's crying at the tables. And so in the course of talking with her, she said, yeah, it's just been so tough. She said, I was totally out of work for a while when COVID first hit because the restaurant closed. And she said, I got behind on my electric. And she said, every month, I'm afraid they're going to turn it off. And she, you know, she was just saying how much it meant to her to get that tip. Well, we started home and God wanted to interrupt me again. <laughs> and I felt like he said, pay her electric bill. Well, I didn't know what it was, but I figured if they're ready to turn her electric off, it wasn't going to be cheap. And um, to be real honest, I asked my daughter if she would go back over there the next day and take care of this for me <laughs> because I didn't really want to go over there and look silly again. And uh, she said, no, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that. So, how many of you are with me, you know? So, now I'm busy, I got lots to do, but I get myself back over to the restaurant the next day, and she wasn't there, she wasn't working that day, but the hostess recognized me and said, oh, I love you so much, and you've helped me so much. And I said, well, good, you can help me with something. And so I had a note, if you send your electric bill to this email address, we'd like to pay it for you. And so the next day she contacts my daughter by email. So she types this note back and she said, you know, I had just about lost my faith in God. 
but you have no idea what this means to me. I've never had anybody be this kind to me in my whole life. And then one other story, my daughter, you know, it doesn't always have to involve money. Sometimes people just need you to listen or sometimes even just a smile or just to tell somebody you're doing a good job. My daughter was coming out of the store one day and this elderly gentleman was waiting at the curb by her and there was all kinds of traffic going by and she was in a hurry, wanted to get home and do all these things, but she had to wait for all this traffic and so this man starts talking to her and she didn't really want to listen. But you know, if we're going to be real Christians, we don't always get to do what we want to do. Amen? Amen. And so she said, I felt like God just put it on my heart to just stand there and listen to him. So she said, I stood there for 15 minutes and just listened to him. And you know what? That was just a kind thing to do. But you know what? We've always got something else we have in addition to our do not disturb sign is we've all got an excuse bag. And so really, to be honest, most Christians just look like this. All oh, the cameras come out when I act silly. Now, of course, we wouldn't wear them like this, but they're really there. We always have an excuse when it's not going to be convenient. Love always finds a way, but indifference finds an excuse. A reporter interviewing people on the street approached a well-dressed, successful-looking man and asked, what are the two most pressing problems in America? And the man said, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> and the reporter said, sir, you are absolutely correct. Those are the two biggest problems. People don't know and they don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I went to church last Sunday. Isn't that enough? No. <laughs> See, we're just fooling ourselves if we're not gonna get out in the world and live it. Yeah, you're being a little too quiet. <laughs> we're just fooling ourselves if we're not gonna get out. And I know that's a little bit scary because you think, Trace, I don't know if I can do that kind of stuff like you're talking about. Well, it's not that, you know, God has me do something like that every day, but I get interrupted a lot by God. Because <laughs> it's about more than just coming and sitting in a pew. Amen? Amen? Indifference is the attitude that pervades our culture today. I don't know and I don't care. Don't disturb me. I've always got an excuse. I'm too busy, I'm too this, I'm too that. I don't know how to do that. I'd feel silly, whatever it might be. In Luke 14, 12 through 14, it said, Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers or your sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they might invite you back. And then you'll be repaid. Now, you know, Jesus used a lot of over-exaggerations to make points, and that was very common in those days. I do it sometimes in my preaching. I'll overstate something to make a point. And uh, so he didn't, he's not really saying you can't have your friends for dinner. He's just saying make sure that that's not all that you have. <laughs> How about let's have some of the people that you don't know that can't pay you back? But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous.
Luke 14, 16 through 20, Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and he invited many guests. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come because everything's now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. And I think maybe Jesus might be saying today, okay, everything is all ready. Come now and get out in the world and start doing what you say you believe. Hmm. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said, well, I've just bought a field and I have to go see to it, please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out, would you please excuse me? And still another said, well, I just got married so I can't come, please excuse me. In Matthew 8, 19 through 22, it says, then a teacher of the law came to him, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to even lay his head. In other words, if you're gonna follow me, it's not always gonna be comfortable. Another disciple said to him, Lord, I'd like to go, but first let me go and bury my father. Listen to what Jesus said. But Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. So what's Jesus saying? Leave the dead stuff alone and follow me. How many hours a day do you spend on social media listening to all the gossip and the stupidity that people spurt out about stuff they don't even know anything about? I, you would not believe the stuff that I can find out about me if I get on there. <laughs> I mean, three years ago, I was dead. <laughs> we had people calling the office crying, oh my God. <laughs> I, I had to get on Facebook and say, I'm not dead. <laughs> right here. We have people calling the office still to this day insisting that they can buy our diet pills that I'm selling. <laughs> I don't sell diet pills. <laughs> I'm preaching the gospel. Yeah, I mean, I, people just really need to get something to do. But you know, that, that's just wasted time. Just to go through all that stuff. and Everybody telling you every move they're making all day long, I mean, who cares? <laughs> I guess somebody does, they keep reading it. And if you're somebody who does that, I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but there are so many more things to do than to spend hours a day reading all this stuff, a lot of it is just gossip. And I thank God for the internet because we can put the gospel anywhere and the devil can't stop us. If they got a signal, they can pull it down. But then of course, Satan always tries to take advantage of every good thing that's out there too. And so be careful about spending too much of your time on dead things. Jesus said, no, follow me. Well, let's go back for a minute. We have to go back for a minute to the Good Samaritan. Who should we help? Who should we be concerned about? Jesus said, your neighbor. Well, who is our neighbor? In reply, Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled where the man was, when he saw him, he took pity on him. Now, the Samaritan did some things that I want you to notice. First of all, he noticed. 
It was interesting when we were in the back room before we came out, I used the last Kleenex in my little package and Todd noticed that and he brought me a new package. Little thing, but I love people that notice. So he noticed, he stopped. He sacrificed because he, he took this man, put him on his own horse, took him to an inn. He apparently was going somewhere that he had to get to. And he said to the owner of the inn, you take care of him, get him healthy again, and whatever it costs, I will pay you when I come back. He didn't even put any limits on what he would do for this guy that he didn't even know. I love that. A man named C.T. Studd said, some wish to live within the sound of a chapel bell. I want to run a rescue mission within a yard of hell. <laughs> do you want to sit in church and just be religious? Or do you want to get involved? How many of you agree with me that the large majority of people today, they just don't want to get involved? I mean, you know it's true, it's true. You don't want to get involved. A lot of people love to come sit in the back row of church, come in halfway through worship, leave the second it's over, don't, want to, don't know you, don't want to know you. Just want to check off my went to church box this week. You'll recover by the next time I come. He noticed, he stopped, and he sacrificed without limits. I love that. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith, Galatians 6 says. That scripture has been life-changing for me because what it says, be mindful, he's saying, on purpose have your mind full of ways that you can be a blessing. So see, if you'll pray every morning like you said you would, God, show me somebody I can help today. Show me something I have that I can give away. Put somebody in front of me that has a need. He'll do it. And it may not be every single day of your life, and some days it may just be a little thing. It may just be that you'll notice something and pray for the person. Love is not just a word, it's not a sermon, it's not something we theorize about, it's action. And it's expensive. Love always costs us something, some money, some time, some effort, Verse 10 in Galatians 6 says, so then as occasion and opportunity open up to us, let us do good to all people. Can everybody say, I'm not gonna miss another opportunity? I wish some of you guys would smile more. <laughs> say it like you mean, I'm not gonna miss another opportunity. I think this part of Florida is gonna ha have a better day tomorrow. Let me shut this down with one last scripture. Amos 6, verse 1 and verses 4 through 7. These scriptures tell us this. Those who are idle and don't stay active helping others are the first to go into captivity themselves. Woe to you who are complacent in Zion and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria. You notable men of the foremost nation to whom the people of Israel come. You lie on beds adorned with ivory and lounge on your couches. You dine on choice lamb and fatted calves. You strum away on your harps like David and improvise on your musical instruments. 
You drink wine by the bowl fulls and use your finest lotions, but you do not grieve over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, you will be among the first to go into captivity or into exile. Your feasting and your lounging will come to an end. Hmm. I got too much other stuff and I don't have time for it, but. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you this. If you want to be dangerous to the devil, <laughs> this is the way to do it. If you want to change the world or be part of helping to change the world, this is the way to do it. One scripture in the Bible makes the point. What are we going to do about everything that's going on in the world today? Romans 12, 21, we overcome evil with good. Yes. Walking in love, I mean love that's got some action to it, is the highest form of spiritual warfare that you can do. The devil will not know what to do with you if you really start caring about people. Maybe you've heard me tell this story or seen it on TV, but I just want to close with this little story. It was a very cold day in December, and there was a little boy about 10 years old standing in front of a shoe store on the road, and he was barefoot peering through the window and shivering with cold. And a lady approached the boy and said, my little fellow, why are you looking so earnestly in the window? And he said, well, ma'am, I was asking God to give me a pair of shoes. The lady took the boy by the hand. See, here's the thing. When we see needs like that, we don't have to have a prayer meeting. <laughs> you don't even need to ask God, should I help this person or not? You just do because that's who you are. You can't help yourself. You can't just walk away. So she took him inside and asked the clerk to get her a half a dozen pair of socks, new socks, and asked if she could have a basin of water and a washcloth, a towel. She washed the little guy's feet and dried him with the towel and put a new pair of the socks on him and then she asked for a pair of shoes that would fit him and got him a brand new pair of shoes. And she said, well, little fellow, I'm sure that you feel a lot better now, don't you? And he looked up at her and he said, ma'am, are you God's wife? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pray for you. If you meant what you said earlier, now remember, you stuck your hand up. <laughs> and you said, I will ask God every morning <laughs> to put somebody in my path that I can help. Father, I pray for everybody here tonight that there was a change of heart, that some eyes were opened and I think maybe a lack of people doing this is even what's opening the door for some of the problems they have. Help us, Lord, to realize that we can no longer just walk away from hurting people and do nothing. We can pray, we can help, we can hug, we can smile, we can encourage. Maybe we pay a bill. Maybe we buy them something that they want and could never afford. It's just an avenue to introduce people to you. And I pray, Lord, that you'll show them what you want them to do and they'll have fun doing it, that they will enjoy it and it will bring such breakthrough in their lives that they just won't hardly be able to believe it. 
I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise.